PVC worm towers are an intriguing idea for turning food waste into worm castings, but do they work? We're going to cover that on today's short episode of Coffee and Compost. My name is Steve Churchill, and this is the Urban Worm Company. The worm tower is an interesting permaculture innovation designed to allow you to recycle food waste and create worm castings without ever leaving your garden. Now, I wanna head off any confusion about what I mean by a worm tower. I'm not talking about stackable worm systems like the Worm Factory, Verma Hut, or the Hot Frog. I'm talking about partially buried PVC tubes that have holes drilled in the bottom 12 to 18 inches. The largest diameter PVC available to the general public is four inches wide, and we'll get back to why that's important here in a second. The theory is that you put the food waste into the PVC pipe, and the worms come and go as they like through those holes, entering the tower to eat the food and then leaving to deposit the castings around the garden while also aerating the soil. This is a fascinating concept, but I'm skeptical for a few reasons. Now, I wanna say up front that I could be wrong. I wrote a blog post about why worm towers probably don't work, and I've gotten a lot of feedback from readers who swear up and down that they do. So I'm open to having my mind changed. But if they do work, I don't think they work the way people think they do. And I'll explain further at the end. So why do I think worm towers don't work the way people think they do? Firstly, composting worms aren't soil dwellers. Red wigglers, European night crawlers, African night crawlers, and other composting worms are epigeic worms, which is Greek for on the soil. These worms are scrawny and lack the muscle to burrow vertically or horizontally into the soil like their endogeic and anisic brothers and sisters. They normally live above the soil, but below loose layers of organic matter like manure or leaves on the forest floor. Even if they can live in a four inch PVC pipe and eat food waste, they're unlikely to be able to make their way out into more compacted soil. Secondly, because composting worms tend to stay near the surface of their habitat, vermicomposting is reliant on surface area rather than volume. And there's a tiny amount of surface area inside a four inch pipe. Let's do the math. A four inch diameter pipe will get you 12 inches of surface area or 1 12th of a square foot. If we stock this PVC pipe at two pounds per square foot of worms, then we're only talking between two and three ounces of composting worms. If we generously assume that worms will eat half their weight uh, each day, and I think the real number is about half that, then our worm towers can process a whopping one to one and a half ounces of organic waste every day, which includes both the food waste and the bedding which you're supposed to put into a worm bin. That's not much. So if you're using worm towers, then you'll have to accept that you'll either process very little waste or your garden will be dotted with white pipes sticking out of the ground like tombstones in a cemetery. If you wanna do in-ground vermicomposting, then you're better off with a five gallon bucket or a system like the SubPod. I remain a little skeptical that composting worms would be able to leave these containers and aerate soil with any efficiency though. So why do I think some people say these work well? I think it has everything to do with the addition of organic matter to the soil. Organic matter comes from anything that was once alive and is now dead and decaying. It's an excellent food for life in the soil, whether that life is mites or critters like uh, beetles or microscopic uh, animals like bacteria and fungi. Worms will also be attracted to this all you can eat buffet, but those will be regular earthworms rather than composting worms. I tell people all the time, do not buy composting worms to put into soil to improve it. Don't buy worms at all. There's a reason your soil doesn't have any worms in it, and it's likely because it lacks the organic matter that worms need to eat. Instead, make your soil more attractive to worms by adding organic matter. That new food source will attract existing worms and help provide the conditions to make them reproduce and increase the population in your soil. And while I think that worm towers are kind of an inefficient way to add organic matter to the soil, it's better than nothing, and I could see some real benefit to doing it. Gang, I've been doing vermicomposting now for a little over 10 years, and I've made every mistake in the book. I get a lot of emails from new vermicomposters who are struggling with the same things I did. So I created a short, easy guide to show you how to steer clear of the most common rookie vermicomposting mistakes. You should see a link on your screen right about now. If you're on a desktop, it's probably here. It might be somewhere else if you're on mobile. Go ahead and click it to sign up for our email list and you can get that guide immediately. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you on the next video.